Good morning, brothers and sisters. Here we go again. It seems like every year I have to deal with this question. It seems like every year someone finds one of my older videos having to do with Calvinism and they get upset. The email I got yesterday, I don't know if it was from a subscriber, I don't know who this person is, but they were quite upset and the header of their email was basically, election isn't fair and you're stupid for believing it. That's basically what he said to me. Election isn't fair and you're stupid for believing in it. Now, here's a shocking revelation. He's not wrong. Election is not fair. But there's two different views that distinguish the fairness. Okay, you have the unbibl unbiblical view and you have the biblical view. Now, I'm going to explain to you his view, which is unbiblical. He doesn't believe election's fair because he believes that if God were to elect a certain people and send everyone else to hell, that would make him a monster. Okay, that's the unbiblical view. The biblical view, which is my view, is God has chosen a people from the beginning. Okay, Ephesians 1. He has elected a people to faith. Okay, and he's always had a people. This is why I commend people to read through the Old Testament. He's always had a people. An election isn't fair. But if you are a Christian, you don't want fairness. You want grace. You want to know what fairness is? Let me describe to you what fairness is. Fairness is God creating mankind to sin, okay, to live out their life, complete life, with no hope of salvation because he never sent himself in the form of his son to, to live a perfectly righteous life and to die and shed his blood to become the propitiation for our sins. He never sent that, okay? So now we just have ourselves and our sin to live out our lives, to die and go to hell. That's fair because that is all you deserve. Sinner, do you understand that? All you deserve is hell. All I deserve are the hottest parts of hell for my sins against this holy and righteous God. That's all you deserve. That's fairness. I want grace. You want to know what grace is? Grace is God making a way for those whom he has chosen to love before the foundations of the world. Those whom he has predestined to become his. Okay. He has made a way for them to escape the wrath to come, his wrath. And that is mercy. And that mercy flows from grace. For it is by grace we have been saved through faith, not of ourselves, so that we may not boast. Election is not fair, but it's what you desire if you recognize you are a sinner who deserves hell. Thank God. Thank God for election. Because without it, we all perish. So do you see the differences in the unbiblical view of election being and making God a monster and the biblical view of election being God's will? OK, and those who inherit and those who are changed and those who are supernaturally regenerated by the Holy Spirit because they were elected before the foundation of the world understand that they've received grace and from that grace flows mercy okay you know it always it, it doesn't frustrate me whenever i encounter people who are against the tulip and calvinism and, and the sovereignty of god uh it, it makes me feel sorry for them because uh it it, it reveals that they're still hard-hearted they still desire that which the flesh wants and that's not god they want it their way and, and a lot of times people want to be able to boast you know these people who are free willers, these people who want to fall on the, the idea, the ideology that they can choose and that they can decide to turn and repent and come to God on their own. They want to be able to boast. They want to be able to erase Ephesians 2, 9. They want to be able to, on the day of judgment, say, I chose God. God, like I said before, they want to be able to give God 50 percent and they want the other 50 percent. God saved me, but I came to God. So, yes, I can boast in myself. And that's nothing but flesh. That's nothing but the flesh talking. OK, uh, and that flows from a hard heart. The true Christian, the, the one who's received a new heart, um, understands that, listen. If the father did not draw me in, I would have never come to Christ. I was not seeking Christ. I was on the broad way. I wasn't looking over to the narrow way. I, would, I didn't care about the narrow way. I was on the broad way and I would have continued on the broad way until I fell off into the pit. And that's all I am. That's all I was outside of God's mercy and grace. So, please read the Old Testament. Everyone should be reading the Old Testament. 
because the Old Testament gives you a clear understanding of things when it comes to uh, 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 election. Um, because the first five books of Moses, that's that's all there is, is God and his people, God and those whom he loves. Everyone else is an en enemy. Everyone else is an enemy. OK, where was where was where was the uh, the love for Pharaoh? Where was the love for the Amorites? Where, where was God's love for them? There wasn't. He hated them. He destroyed them. God played with Pharaoh's heart like he was a fiddle. He played with them. There was no love for him. God has always had a people. OK, he's always had a people. And the four books after Genesis perfectly outline that. So, yeah, I just wanted to uh, respond to whoever sent me that that hateful email.